When you're creating art for a game, you want to ensure that the sprites work well together, not just individually. In that, it's a bit different from working on a regular illustration, where you just have one composition, one element. The sprites are going to move relative to the background, so you want to ensure that they work in different situations with different lighting conditions sometimes. And I want to show you how to preview that in Krita if you haven't integrated the assets in the game or you haven't set up your art pipeline just yet. When I talk about the art or asset pipeline, I mean setting up tools so that you can export the assets in the game engine and re-export them very efficiently, which we'll, we'll cover in another video. But in Krita, you can already do what I've done in this document, which is just a mock-up for prototyping purposes. I have some layers here that have a folder icon next to them. These are file layers. They reference Krita documents non-destructively. So although I have my checkpoint and I can move it around my canvas here, I can at any time go open my file layer to get the source illustration that Asmo made, make a change. Let's do something really ugly so we can really see it. Save, go back to my uh, general mockup, which will also serve as an export template. And voila, you get the result instantly updating in the document. You can use that to organize your art for the game into many creator documents that you can then regroup in a file that you will use for export. A bit of a nerd, so I'm going to use the command line to go to this folder here. This is the work folder for Asmo on the sprites and open it in my file manager. So here you see our export document. I have a small program, a bit of code to move the sprites and send them directly to Godot on export. And then we have folders so are going to be the same folders as we have in the game, in the assets folder, our game source code, with the individual creator document. So if we go down environment, we can go to interactive to find the anchor point, the checkpoint, and the uh, various you know, variations that we have on some of the illustrations. This is where my checkpoint came from, and I'm going to remove that ugly red dot. Once you have these files in your master export document, you create a regular Krita document that you organize however you want. And you just have to drag and drop one of these documents on the canvas. So I'm going to do that with the checkpoint. You can insert it as a new file layer. And this will create this kind of layer with the folder next to it. I'll close the other Krita document so you can see that now when I click this folder, it will open the checkpoint, the um, illustration here. You can then move the element around the canvas. You can see that the proportions here are a bit off for this one maybe compared to the checkpoint, it's a bit big. We are going to scale it down. Because it's a file, you can't directly scale it down. You have to add a transform mask. So for that, you click on that arrow next to the add layer button and you want to go down to transform mask. Once you have this selected, you can press Ctrl T like usual to use the free transform tool. Shift, click on, for example, this handle at the top to scale the element down. I'm doing this as Asmo is working on the rough version of the sprite, which is before the sprite is something like that, you actually want to work on a very rough version about like that. You place the shadows, you get the main shapes, uh, you just define the sprite and its silhouette a little bit, you put it in the game, and then once you can validate that it will work well, you detail it to get to this kind of final result. For the character, we also directly took the initial concept art for it, which is in the more anime style, you know, animation style art. And as you can see at this stage, so Asmo had made some uh, artwork for the background. I will open it. It's in the background folder. So it's the, this initial background. And you can see already that 
the proportions for the mountains is a bit different. Putting everything together in the export file, the mountains were a little too large and the scene was feeling a bit off in terms of scale. So I squashed them on the x-axis, duplicated them, and it's completely fine if there's a seam or a little issue with the connection here. This is for testing purposes. These kinds of details are not important as you are prototyping the game. You want to ensure that the graphics work in the engine and in this composition in general. And then later, you will fix everything. You will polish all of the art. So right now you can see there's a bit of a difference in style with the background, the element that we have here, the statue, and the character, because we are in the middle of transitioning from concept art to the game art. We were doing tests with the tile map, which doesn't tile properly as well, and which is a bit grainy. The texture is not too great just yet. But again, we put everything together. This allows you, when you are in this document, for testing purposes, you can select anything you know, I could go on my mock sky, for example, here, and in my mountains. If I consider that they have too much contrast, I can go add a color adjustment layer, and I'm going to create an inverted S-curve to lower the contrast a little bit. So you can use those kinds of tricks, or on the other hand, I could do an S-curve to increase the contrast, making it way too saturated compared to the foreground. So this is not something that you want. It's quite the contrary. One thing you can do if an element, a certain layer or a group of layers is too bright, you will go to the lightness curve and you can then reduce the lightness a little bit, which will somewhat preserve the saturation. And if the colors look too saturated when they are darker, you can then go to the saturation channel and lower the curve in the area, for example here in the shadows, lower it a little bit. The advantage of using layers as well here is that there again, these are non-destructive in Krita, so I can tone down the mountains a little bit, feel a, even more like that in the background without making any change to the source files just for visual purposes. And once we validate that everything looks good together, in this file, we can go back to the source file and modify it there. From there, you can use our add-on GQuest Art Tools to export selected layers or to use our flexible export system to create individual sprites from the layers that you created in Krita and save a lot of time like that. You can find a tutorial to do that in the video description below. Right now, you still have to install it. It's available on GitHub and might be a little technical, but we have the install instructions there. And in the future, it might be directly integrated in Krita. These were just a few quick tips as I'm working on that right now that I wanted to share. But for now, I want to thank you kindly for watching. Be creative, have fun, and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.